wherever you're watching us from, I really want to thank you so much for being part of uh, this uh, broadcast. Uh, it has been, of course, a long week and we have a lot in store for you. Uh, my name is Brian and I'm just going to be looking at a few things that you need to know, uh, especially from the world of sports. And if you're out there and uh, you want to give us feedback, all you need to just do, look for our social media platforms, uh, post your comments there. And of course, uh, slowly by slowly, we'll be giving you another way of uh, you giving us feedback because we really need to know exactly what we need, uh, of course, uh, to improve on uh, in this programming for you to enjoy it a little bit more. We're going to be looking at a lot of things today. And of course, uh, we are uh, including the national team. Uh, a draw was made this week. Uh, that, uh, of course, is going to be uh, determining whether we qualify for the uh, African Cup of Nations, uh, the 2025 edition that is going to be, uh, of course, uh, in Morocco. So we will be looking at uh, that draw and discussing it a little bit more, looking at all the teams that are in that group uh, we are supposed to be, of course, facing. And uh, we will be looking at uh, how we've fared against all these teams in the previous meetings that we've had uh, with them. On the other side, we have a lot of talk of players moving here and there on the local scene. So I'm just going to be looking at a lot of uh, uh, those uh, local transfers, uh, there's a lot that is happening. And on the local scene here, uh, beginning, of course, with uh, the 2025 uh, African Cup of Nations, uh, like I told you, uh, the draw was made this week and uh, news has uh, reached us that Uganda will be facing South Africa, they will be facing uh, Southern Sudan, they will be facing Congo uh, in uh, the group that they are going to be, uh, you know, uh, the group that they are going to be playing in in uh, the African Cup of Nations uh, 2025. And of course, the draw was made uh, on uh, Thursday this week. It was uh, done all the way uh, in uh, South Africa, Johannesburg, and uh, we are expected to be beginning our games uh, in uh, September, October, and November this year. And uh, Uganda, of course, uh, being one of the teams that are going to be uh, playing against uh, the uh, those all those three teams, and uh, the top two teams in the group uh, will be qualifying for uh, that. Um, in fact, uh, the top two teams in each group of the 12 groups uh, will be qualifying for the finals that will be played in Morocco starting on December the 21st and uh, 20, uh, 20, that is 25 to January uh, the 18th of 2026. And uh, Uganda, of course, have uh, played a lot of uh, these teams in uh, different games. Uh, they've played South Africa uh, over four games and uh, we've won none of them. Uh, we've uh, drawn one of them and lost three of them, which means that uh, our first meeting was in 2024. Uh, in the FIFA 2026 World Cup qualifiers with the Bafana Bafana. Uh, they beat us 1-0 at an Ambole courtesy of uh, Benny McAfee uh, penalty, if you remember that uh, penalty. And South Africa have also won uh, another reverse fixture that they played in the same tournament. And of course, that was uh, the game that ruled us out of um, the games that were played all the way in Germany uh, that World Cup. So uh, we are uh, going to be facing a side that is familiar with us. The other two meetings, uh, one was in the Kosafa uh, game, it ended 1-1. Uh, and uh, there is also another friendly that we played uh, that uh, ended 3-2 in the favor of the Bafana Bafana. So that means that we don't have a lot of good history, especially when we are playing against this uh, Bafana Bafana side uh, in the against Congo. Uh, we've played uh, seven games. Uh, we've uh, won uh, four of them, drawn one, and lost three of them. So uh, six of our past meetings have been competitive and uh, only two international friendlies. And uh, of course, uh, it goes back all the way to 1965 uh, when we won 3-1 in uh, as well as in 1973. So, uh, in fact, 1965, we won 2-1 and then 3-1. Uh, uh, that was in 1973. So, uh, our latest meeting, I think, was in the FIFA World Cup qualifiers in uh, 2018, uh, where Cranes uh, beat, that is, uh, uh, this Congo side 1-0. Uh, that was... Um, uh, that, that was a game that we played and when we went to Congo, uh, I think we drew uh, away in that game uh, against Congo. So uh, that is how we fared against Congo. Against Southern Sudan, we've played six, we've won four, uh, we've drawn one and lost one uh, in there. And uh, that means that, of course, our previous six meetings, uh, looks, uh, it looks like Uganda looked like the better side in there. And uh, the only defeat came in uh, the last meeting that was away in Nairobi, uh, where Tiko Akelo uh, scored the winner. Uh, that ended our hopes of uh, reaching the 2021 African finals. So we need to be very careful. A lot of people have come out and talked about uh, uh, this Southern Sudan team as 
uh, it's going to be more of a Uganda Premier League encounter. Uh, that is how they refer to uh, that game. Uh, I don't really want to go into that. I don't want to really believe that uh, this Southern Sudan is uh, a, a lesser team in there. I don't really want to, to, to look that way because if you really go into such a tournament and go into such a game and you underestimate a team, teams have evolved. The Southern Sudan that we've uh, faced in the previous years, uh, maybe 2021 or the other previous years, are not the same. They've grown in stature. They've improved. They have a new stadium in there uh, that was built. Uh, they have a lot of things that have been evolving in their game. So we need to learn from um, the past mistakes that we've had, especially uh, coming out and underestimating teams. Uh, we need to learn that every team has a contribution. Uh, players are getting better. The teams that played the Uganda Cranes in the previous four or five years and had a better uh, you know, game against us when they come play against us uh, just uh, giving give an example of the game that we played against uh, the Nigerian team you remember uh, how we've been suffering against this West, these northern African Arabian teams and uh, when you look at how we are playing now and how they really uh, find it so hard to win against us uh, though they sometimes get the better of us but we also uh, put up a game we also put up at least a competitive uh, fix out there so it is not as easy as we expect it to be and again in south africa a lot of things will really determine remember the hype that comes in south africa the media coverage uh, you remember south africa is one of the best uh, when it comes uh, i think south africa is the england of uh, africa they know how to hype uh, their game they know how to hype their teams even if uh, their teams are not 100 uh, percent you know they're not 100 percent uh, up there you know they will they will find a way of making their players look like uh, the best in the world uh, and and to me that is where i really really need uh, us to be very careful uh, they have one of the best goalkeepers in africa uh, he has shown uh, 18 even in the african cup of nations they recently concluded ones in ivory coast he, they showed that they have what it takes they have the uh, players that can really give up give us the, the kind of competition that we need uh, but we also need to mind the uh, these mind games that they usually play south africa is one of the few teams that uh, know how to play the mind games uh, they have the media on their side they have a lot of pressure that can come your way their facilities are up there uh, if you go to south africa and watch the uh, football facilities though some of them uh, after the world cup of uh, 2010 uh, some of them are underutilized because of the stature of the stadiums. They have big stadiums that are having capacities over uh, 60,000 and uh, even beyond. And uh, these stadiums have not really been utilized to the maximum because you remember that uh, such tournaments like the World Cup come with a lot of fan base. They come with a lot of people that come to these stadiums. And uh, if you really construct uh, infrastructure basing on that kind of number, uh, the local games will suffer because uh, for local fans, for example, for teams like Kaiser Chiefs. Yes, they have, uh, you know, uh, they, they have the fans that can come to the stadium, but you cannot equate it to uh, the fans that come for the World Cup. So they have a lot of uh, facilities that are very good. And uh, before you know, you really uh, be overwhelmed by uh, the atmosphere itself. So we need to train our players, uh, you know, to come up with the mindset that really is going to be winning such games. And I'm really, really uh, very happy with uh, the inclusions in the team. Uh, the couple of both see that player that came from uh, Napoli, uh, that player from Italy. Uh, they have the mentality is mature enough is uh, i think 29 years of age and you look at that category of players they've experienced the kind of professionalism that uh, we need on our in our players in, in, according to mindset and if you look at the other players uh, that are in there uh, the the mukwalas of this world uh, they, they they've been to the african scene and they know what uh, to do especially when they are facing such players so i really think uh, in fact it, it even came in from power porter our, our manager he came out and talked about our players as uh, not being arrogant and he talked about how uh, this is a fair group he says it's not an easy group we don't have to underestimate it but it's a fair group and that is what i also think because uh, we need to really uh, get at least all uh, the local results we need to find out winning all our local games and then uh, get one or two draws from uh, the games that we're going to be playing away uh, to me i believe that would be uh, we need to get one win away and one draw away and to me i think that would be a very good outing for us if really really uh, focus on that but that is how the games are 
going to be played and uh, the defending champions Ivory Coast were placed in uh, one of the groups that are going to be a little bit challenging. Uh, they're going to be facing uh, Zambia, Sierra Leone as well as Chad. That is not going to be an easy group for them. Uh, that is in Group G. So uh, when you look at uh, the other groups, just <clears throat> to give you a roundup, uh, there is uh, Group A where we have uh, uh, Tunisia, Madagascar, Comoros as well as Gambia. Uh, group B we have Morocco, we have Gabon, we have Central African Republic as well as Lesotho. Uh, group C we have Egypt, Cape Verde, Moshenia and um, uh, Botswana as well. Uh, group D uh, we have uh, Nigeria, Benin, Libya as well as Rwanda. Uh, Rwanda really have uh, another interesting group in there uh, with the likes of Benin and Libya. Very tricky teams. Those two are very tricky teams. And Nigeria, I think Rwanda have a very tough group when you compare to uh, ours. Algeria, uh, Equatorial Guinea, Togo and Liberia. That is another group, Group E. Uh, we have Ghana, Angola, uh, Sudan as well as Niger. That is Group F. Another tricky group, especially for uh, teams like uh, Ghana, because they kind of need to pick themselves up. Uh, they look like they've been wearing out uh, on the African scene, so they need to pick themselves up and come and do something special. Group H, we have DR Congo, Guinea, Tanzania, as well as Ethiopia. Uh, group I, we have Mali, Mozambique, Guinea-Bissau, Guinea 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 and uh, Eswatini. Uh, group J, we have Cameroon, uh, Namibia, Kenya, as well as Zimbabwe. Uh, group K, we have South Africa. We have Uganda, Congo, as well as Sudan, and Group L, we have uh, Senegal, Burkina Faso, Malawi, as well as Burundi. Uh, Burundi, uh, another counterpart in the Afri East African region, really have uh, a lot of work to do. Uh, Kenya as well, uh, Cameroon, Namibia, Kenya, Zimbabwe, that is also another fair group. Kenya can uh, get a result against the likes of Namibia because, uh, you know, you're in the almost in the same region, you're familiar with the kind of game they can put up. So, um, as well as Zimbabwe, but Zimbabwe, not an easy team to play against, uh, but Cameroon, very tough, and uh, you expect them to be one of uh, the teams that will dominate that group in there. But, uh, looking at, uh, of course, um, the things that we need to work on uh, briefly before I end uh, that story. Uh, the things we need to work on, one, uh, we need to work on our uh, conversion rate. Uh, I think that has been always a problem for Uganda uh, ever since the likes of uh, Geoffrey Massa uh, played for this national team, the likes of Dennis, uh, Denny, David, David Oboa, uh, one of, uh, I think, the, when it comes to scoring the goals in there, he has been one of the players that uh, contributed so much in uh, striking force. Uh, so we need to really, uh, Hassan Mobiru, uh, if you really watched Hassan Mobiru, you really know what it meant to score uh, as a number nine, who was one of the best number nines who also we've uh, had, of course, living alone um, uh, the, the, the best that we've had in this country uh, I'm forgetting the name of uh, the gentleman but uh, all this uh, Musisi, uh, Majidu Musisi is one of uh, the best experts we've had and of course uh, one of the players that uh, went out there and did uh, everything that was supposed to be done in, uh, in France. Uh, one of, I think it was Lens, one of, one of the teams that really remember him for being one of the best players in there. So uh, we really, really need to improve on our players, especially uh, when it comes to conversion. We need to find a way of, uh, you know, getting those goals in there. We need to find other players that can contribute, if at all, our strike cannot give that and I think uh, in the previous games that we've played uh, Paul Port really is trying to understand his players is trying to find uh, formulas that can really uh, enable us to get those results but I really think our players need to step up they need to take their chances they need to take those shots they need to go for all those aerial duels Uganda was known for uh, conversions of things like set pieces corners and all that stuff I think because of players like uh, Boboa and all the other players that were in there but we need to really find a way we need to have a strategy of winning the game at all costs and i think that would really uh, be uh, a strategy that would give us the results that uh, we need in there uh, that is what i had for you of course on that uh, chapter of uh, the african cup of nations qualifiers that are going to be on beginning soon so we'll be uh, keeping you posted uh, there's a lot of movement on the local scene and i really want to uh, give you a few things to do with uh, what is happening on the local scene a lot of players are moving and i am re really very excited uh, about the way local teams are really doing these transfers we are starting to uh there's excitement especially in the local game i don't know uh, whether it's it is coping uh from uh, the international scene i saw one of the clubs i think it was a uh, 
Bull FC, was it Bull FC, Lugaz FC? The unveiling of these players, especially on social media, uh, shows you that there is some work being done, the partnering with the local uh, media companies uh, that are doing these commercials and these unveilings and putting you on pressure to really know what are they going to be bringing. I really, I really like the, uh, the, the promotion and the modernization in the game that is really picking up uh, very fast. But, of course, uh, one of the stories that is happening with the local scene, uh, the local scene that is uh, Ashaba Mavin, uh, one of the players that uh, is being, uh, of course, uh, confirmed that he's going to be leaving Express FC. It has been confirmed on his Twitter account. He has departed, of course. Uh, I think he departed a few, uh, I think some few uh, days back, he, he departed to Europe for trials and uh, it was a professional deal he was looking for and it has, it has been confirmed that uh, from from his social media post that uh, he's going to be uh, playing for Glibata uh, outfit called uh, Lincoln Red Imps FC and uh, that team uh, uh, Imps FC is going to be playing uh, I think in uh, he, he might be playing in the UEFA Champions League qualifiers. Ashaba uh, played uh, 17 Uganda Premier League games with Express FC this season and he scored uh, one goal making uh, 400 uh, 41 appearances, of course, uh, in one of the half uh, season, there's four goals. And uh, he has been, of course, uh, a player that has played for Police FC and uh, Top United. And uh, one of the teams that, of course, uh, he's going to be joining that uh, team uh, called uh, Red Imps uh, plays in uh, the Gibraltar National League. And they've, uh, of course, uh, had the record for uh, the most champions, uh, 27 league titles and including four uh, constitutive titles that have been uh, won by this team. And of course, they played in the Europa League and all that stuff. And you expect him to be part of uh, those European games. So he's a gentleman. Uh, I think the latest, latest video he posted on his social media account uh, showed him uh, doing a trial uh, after a game and uh, he talked about of course life in there and it looks like it's going to be confirmed that uh, in fact it has already been confirmed that he has left Express FC and uh, he's uh, looking for more professional uh, football out there and uh, he's uh, joining that team in there. The other story uh, of course coming in from Chitala Football Club, it has been confirmed that uh, their captain uh, Maxwell or uh, Chigui uh, he's a gentleman that assigned a contract extension as well uh, he, uh, the defender, uh, is the longest serving at uh, this club and it has been confirmed that uh, he has added another year and will stay until uh, June uh, 2025. Maxwell has been at the club since 2027, uh, 2018 uh, season and uh, he joined, remember, from uh, Boma uh, Young FC. He has played uh, 33 matches for Shala, uh, you remember, last season and uh, he was the player that made uh, the most appearances. Of course, he becomes the third player uh, to extend his contract uh, with the Hoima Base Club uh, after Jude uh, Semgari as well as Benjamin and Yakoyo also came out and uh, confirmed that they are going to be extending uh, their contract in there. The other player, uh, Apollo uh, Kongogwe, uh, Marun FC have confirmed that uh, he's their first signing of the season. It has been confirmed that uh, this defender uh, coming from Makiso Giants uh, is going to be signing for a two-year uh, deal with an option of extending it uh, to an extra year. Uh, Kongogwe has been at Wakiso Giants for the last two seasons. Uh, his versatility uh, allows him to play comfortably both as a right back as well as a central defender. He has also been a regular for the under 20 team, uh, national team, the Hippos, featuring uh, in the 2023 African under 20 tournament that was in Egypt and the African Games uh, in Ghana. Uh, that is uh, this year. Before joining Works for Giants, uh, Kongogwe also featured for uh, the uh, Toro United uh, United FC team that is no longer in existence. And uh, of course, uh, he's one of the players that you expect to be uh, very essence to uh, this uh, Maroons teams. Uh, on the other side of Wakiso Giants, they've cons uh, confirmed that they've parted ways with uh, John Luinda Ayala and of course uh, a lot of you know him as uh, of course Coach Ayala. He's joined uh, of course, uh, he joined this team in 2022 after signing an employment contract for two years and uh, he has uh, of course uh, confirmed that uh, his employment contract has come to an end and is going to be parting uh, ways with this uh, purple sharks and of course they've confirmed their appreciation and his contribution uh, to the game uh, in their social media account and uh, Ayala is a footballer of course uh, he was once a football player that played for the likes of Kampala United, SCV and KCCA 
and uh, he has worked as an assistant coach to Abdallah Mobilo at KCCFC as well as Police FC at Wakiso Giants. He replaced is going to be replaced by uh, Stephen Bengo. You remember Stephen Bengo has been so much in the news uh, uh, in joining this Wakiso Giants team, and he's going to be replacing him. And uh, he will be assisted Stephen Bengo by uh, Tony Maweje, another uh, Uganda Queens uh, former player in there. Bull FC. Is another team that is also making the mark. Uh, Bakari Magumba uh, signed a two-year contract with Bull FC. Uh, he's joining all the way, uh, of course, uh, from Bala City as a free agent. Uh, striker Isaac Wangoina uh, is also another player from uh, Express FC that has signed a two-year contract. And uh, it has been, of course, uh, looking good uh, at Bull FC. And it looks like things are happening very fast uh, for them in there. Uh, Lucas FC have also uh, come out and announced arrival of their a new head coach, Sadiq CMPG. And uh, of course, uh, say Coach CMPG is uh, a player, coach that really uh, is excited to lead this team. And when you look at what he said when he was being signed, he looks like he wants to bring expertise to the pitch and let, uh, of course, this team make history with him. His main ass assignment will be uh, to keep Lugazi in uh, the top tier of football. And according to reports, Lugazi have already empowered their squad with the signing of the of midfielder uh, Roger Adrico as well as defender uh, Bashir Asiku, Lugazi and promoting remember uh, to the top flight uh, at the end of the season without a permanent head coach and now CMPG uh, who also uh, coached the likes of Ondon Baraka and often worked as uh, Livingstone Mabazi and second in command or assistant uh, could not of course hide the excitement of joining this team and he looks like he's already set uh, to come and uh, be one of uh, the difference makers all the way at uh, Lugazi FC. On the other side, uh, <clears throat> Simba FC have confirmed Steven Dezemkwala as uh, their uh, player for a three-year uh, contract. Uh, of course, he bid farewell in the previous uh, few uh, days uh, to, of course, uh, to the signing. He bid farewell to Asante Kotoko, and uh, his name is one of the names that is familiar with uh, everyone is familiar with, especially in Ghana, for uh, the best season that he's had uh, last season, uh, concluding, of course, the season as their top scorer. And uh, he's one of the few players that have done a lot. I remember, I think, scoring <clears throat> even on the last game of the season, he's one of the few uh, that have been doing very well, especially in that uh, Simba Fs, in that uh, Asante Kotoko team. <clears throat> and one of the things that have been attributed to his performances, his discipline and the way he has carried himself and uh, joining Simba FC, of course, uh, that means uh, some little money coming in uh, because these contracts usually come on with good sign-on fee and uh, I really like the fact that he's uh, going on to another competitive team to really enhance his career in there. And of course, uh, just to go through the other rumors, uh, Egyptian national side, uh, Bank of Egypt are interested in Uganda uh, forward Iron, I, 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 Alan Katele as well. I go to know so that Nicholas Wadada uh, is also another player that is also uh, going to be signing for Vipers. Uh, one year, con in fact, he has, uh, I think, is a done deal. Uh, one year contract for, of course, uh, for this uh, former Vipers captain. Uh, Marco Fred has also uh, agreed to sign. Uh, that is a two-year deal with Hoima Best uh, Club, that is Achitari FC. I got to know that uh, the fee is going to be 55 million, uh, 2 million salary with uh, uh, 10 million add-ons on uh, in case uh, Chitara win the league. And if he scores uh, 17 plus goals, of course, those add-ons will really uh, kick into uh, place. Uh, Brunan, uh, there's also Shaka, there's also a story that uh, I also wanted to talk about briefly uh, that talks about a gentleman from uh, Brunan. He's called Shaka 27, uh, a player that uh, is reported was not, uh, you know, uh, paid by, uh, by by Mbara City. And uh, there is talk of uh, CAF coming out and FIFA coming out and banning Mbara FC from uh, making any transfers in there uh, until they pay him. I think they need to pay him a few of uh, 15 million uh, Uganda shillings. And uh, uh, it was, he was signed, uh, of course, uh, by, 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 by uh, Waswa Abos, I think. And uh, he decided not to use him... In, in, no, I think uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, stories that are coming in there that they are not going to, they were not willing to give him that money that I think it was supposed to be the sign-on fee. Uh, but uh, there are issues that are coming in, especially with FIFA, and uh, they look like they are going to be uh, imposing something onto them. So I'll be digging too deep into that. I don't want to really make allegations, but uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, bad things that are happening in our game that we need to iron out. And I think this... Uh, teams need to work uh, themselves out. And I think, uh, I think FIFA sent uh, 
the Dutchman's two weeks uh, back to the club, giving them a week to clear the players' debts, or else they'll be banned. And uh, we are waiting to see whether Mbaya FC will really come out and pay the 15 million that is demanded uh, in there. So we are waiting to see all that and so much more. I'll be coming back with so much more. Uh, of course, uh, there's also other talk of uh, the likes of uh, Murshid Duko. You remember very well he was given a red card in one of the games that he played for the national team. Uh, he was, uh, I think it was unable to uh, a player, uh, I'm looking for the name of the player, uh, he was forced into retirement because he could not pay that money. He was banned by, uh, that is uh, FIFA for three years. Uh, for No, not for three years. I think it was uh, for the games that were supposed to be played, the next games, but he had to pay uh, over 30 million. So the team could not uh, pay that money uh, as a nation as well as his club. So uh, he's now uh, been sent into leave. So uh, I saw a post that was on social media uh, while Jude Bellingham was being fined £30,000. Uh, that is an equivalent of £120 million by UEFA uh, for the gestures that he had after the celebration when he scored. Uh, so uh, he has already paid them and now he's going to be playing the next game. So uh, for Uganda here, players like Mushud Yuko, who really are very talented, cannot do that. Uh, so I really Really, really, really want to see what FIFA will, FIFA will be coming out and doing in case, of course, such players really uh, get these kind of bans, especially when they are playing uh, on uh, the national level uh, in their soul. That is another story that really uh, I looked at on the social medias and it was really taking rounds. Thank you so much for uh, being part of uh, the Sports Arena. Enjoy your day. My name is Brian. Bye-bye.